Today we're going to talk about closed circuit and little tiny character details that will help you establish other bigger character details or moments in a movie or in a scene or in your animation shot that will feel in character and not contrived. So let me show you which moment I liked and what I think is going to be really, really cool and why this could be helpful in your animation shot. So as she enters, you can see how she puts down a bag in a very clean fashion, the way she folds this jacket as well. And then as she walks over there, you can see how the shoe is just neatly aligned. Same here. And this is the big moment, that little adjustment. So if you go back, you can see how she takes off the shoes. It's all good. I mean, it's, you know, it's all pretty clean, cleaner than what I would do when I come home, when I throw out my shoes in my jacket. I mean, not always like that, but you know, every now and then you just kind of, you're a bit more relaxed. So she does this and it's this little moment. That shoe has to be just right. It's to me a very specific and very subtle part of the performance. And this might be too subtle for you. You might have to show something in succession or repeatedly so that the audience understands and sees, ah, oh, yeah, this is what the character is doing. This is what the character is used to doing. And maybe then towards the end or whatever the moment happens in the movie or your TV show, whatever you're doing, the audience will be very aware of, oh, this is different. This is going to be something that the character is going to notice and so on and so on. So that little moment of her being precise with how she puts things down and rearranges it could be something very subtle, which in a live action movie is okay. There's a little quirks and subtleties that we see in movies that we're used to seeing, but which might be too subtle for an animated movie or depending on your style, where it's depending on the age range or whatever your target audience is. So she then comes out, has a drink, and then realizes, wait a minute, something is slightly off. This is not right. And then as we go forward, we can see that, wait a minute, something is wrong here. Now, you might argue, this is slightly far-fetched. I mean, there are a lot of books, and yes, she might notice that something is wrong, because maybe she's read all of these and she put these books in a specific order and position, which we can see here, yes, this one stands out, is not being put back, and in this shot especially, there's no other color. There's a very specific color here, and wait, this is wrong. This is not how I put it there, you know, and she looks this and you can see there are different colors. There's more to it. So you might argue maybe this is again a bit far fetched, but at the same time, maybe that's someone that color coordinates her books. Maybe there's a combination of the book title and the book color, but she realized something is wrong. Someone was in this place and now I'm being watched. The other thing that I liked in her performance is that once she realizes that something is wrong, you can look at her clothing. She starts to cover herself up and looks around and wait, something is not quite right. Maybe there's a camera here or someone is watching me from the outside. But the thing that I liked is that you might be comfortable and sit with your, or stand with your arms open, your jacket open, your legs kind of relax like that and realize, wait, I am being watched right now. And then you might go into a position where it's a bit more covered, a bit more protected. You might do this. You might put your color up. You might put your hoodie over. There are all kinds of props you could use to reinforce that moment or that emotional state of something's wrong. Someone is watching me. I just don't feel quite right. And you can change into a specific pose. Now I would stay away from like, I'm uncomfortable, I'm nervous or that type of thing. There are specific poses that are a bit overused. And again, that type of acting is totally okay in a live action movie. And as we know humans and as we observe humans, we are picking up on certain things probably easier that way. Now, if it was in an animated movie or something where it's a bit more stylized, you're gonna have to tweak and adjust your acting choices to fit that style and to consider the target audience. Because if you're adding all kinds of subtle things and people are not gonna notice it, then what's the point? That's quite the waste. The other thing that I thought was kind of cool and it's not acting specific, it's more of a camera thing, is that when she is in here, we are looking at her from the outside. It's almost like she is framed as if someone else is in a different room looking from the outside inside. It's kind of like an observant perspective, which adds to that creepiness and that feeling of I'm being observed that is visible throughout the movie. Something else that I thought was kind of neat and is not really actor specific, this is more of a camera setup, is that when she is in her room and realizes, wait, something is wrong, there's obviously a shift in her acting, her emotions change, but you can see a change in the camera. There's a small forward move that kind of emphasizes that something is different now. 
And again, this is very subtle and it might be too subtle for your movie or maybe it's just right. But I think it's something to think about where when you have a character, are they just going to do the certain beats that are specific to the story that focus on the moments that the audience has to pick up on? So this could all work, obviously. It might end up being too straightforward and give the character not enough texture where it's almost like the actor is following certain beats and that's it. So if you start adding more subtleties, certain quirks to a character, something that throughout the movie we pick up on and realize that's just how they are, that's how they function. But because certain quirks are there and then suddenly they get changed or someone points them out or whatever it is, that can be a moment that is very important to the story, that can point to another story part. So all in all, a lot of subtle moments and subtle acting choices and subtle camera moves, but I think it adds a certain flair to the character, a certain texture to the character. So it's not just here's beat one, two, three, and the actor kind of goes through the motion. It's almost too simple. Now you don't want to just add subtleties and complications just to throw things in there. But I think every now and then a little moment that gives a certain element, a certain added depth and certain complexities to a character is an interesting trait. And to me, it's interesting to watch in a movie. And you might not pick up on this on the first viewing. And you might realize maybe at the end of the movie, wait, she's done this before. Oh wait, she did this back then. Now I realize because of this, she saw this, this, and this. So it could be something that can accumulate and something that you realize at the very end of the movie. Maybe that's also something that you can just put into one shot. That could be just a certain quirk, a certain thing that a character is doing that adds that texture to the character. And you might be able to sneak that into a performance that lasts only five to seven seconds, depending on the shot length that you're animating. But little things like how she puts the jacket down, how she takes off her shoes, all that stuff to me is a cool extra layer. It's an added texture to the character performance. And maybe something that you can use or maybe something you can start looking for in movies. And if you have any other scenes like that, in other movies that you've seen and you thought, yeah, that's something I saw. That's something I remember in this movie. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. And I'm going to continue with other acting analysis movies for subtle performances, more broader things, camera analysis, more stuff is coming. So if you want to get notified, as always, subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss out on any of the uploads. And if you've watched till the very end, thank you so much. And I hope to see you next week.